I, I've worked in a lot of um, in a lot of camps. We were the only healthcare professionals for miles, so we really had to know our stuff. We were using like super old, outdated equipment. You know, when when a patient starts having an anaphylactic reaction, you know, making sure we were taking their blood pressures every 15 minutes to make sure it didn't drop. But we didn't have the automatic blood pressures. We had to use the old and the old, not the older ones, but what we call the sphygmometers. They're the, you know, the ones that you inflate and then you put the stethoscope to their arm and then you just have to listen. It's super fun. It's honestly the first skill we ever learned in nursing school was to learn how to use the manual blood pressure cuffs, the sphygmometers. It's a very, very hard work to say, <laughs> but it's super fun. The sphygmometers? You guys curious how a sphygmometer works? Um, so basically what you do is you, inf you put the cough on the patient. You have the little bulb, right, to inflate it. You, you put the stethoscope right on where their brachial artery is, which is kind of like in the crease of your elbow. Put your stethoscope over there, you inflate the cuff. And what you're gonna hear is, um, you inflate it really high, maybe like close to 200. Unless they have a history of like high blood pressure and then you can probably inflate it more. And what you do is you slowly release air, like really, really, really slowly from 200 all the way down and you're gonna try and look out listen out to a pulse around like the you know the 120s because you know a normal blood pressure is 120 over 80 for adults so you're gonna try and listen out to a normal blood pressure in the 120 to 130 range if not lower for kids so as soon as you hear that like through the stethoscope you, that's when you count the, that's the top blood pressure number. So, for example, it'll start at the 120. Then it'll go do and you keep releasing the air and you'll hear the, you'll still hear the brachial pulse. And then as it slowly fades away, when it stops and you can't hear it anymore, that's the bottom number. And usually it stops around 80. So, whatever you hear the pulse first at the number from the, from the blood pressure cuff, that's the top number, and then when you, when you stop hearing the pulse and you see the pressure on the blood pressure cuff, that's the bottom number, the, the systolic and the diastolic. So that's how you learn how to take the manual blood pressures, and usually they're the most accurate. So, But you have to trust your ears on it too, so it's also not very accurate, because some people will hear it earlier, and some people will hear it later. Some people won't even hear it at all, because people's hearings are really bad, and also their reflexes too. So it's all like it all de depends on how well you can hear the pulse, how quickly you can hear the pulse, how quickly you can read the number on the on the gauge so it's it is a skill that you really have to develop it's very fun yeah yeah you you now you know how it works it's super cool right <laughs> now you guys know how to take a blood pressure using manual blood pressure take a mammometer yeah those were really fun i wish i could do more of them i still do but automatic blood pressures are the norm now